Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock Foundation Disc Golf Week, the podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor and Connor. What up? Uh, got an exciting show today, some more off-season movement. Basically, the last big moves have happened with the off-season, so now we can do winners and losers of the off-season. Kristen Tatar signed an exciting new deal. Uh, yeah. Jeremy Rusko is apparently buying the country club yeah. in Emporia. Boy Scouts added disc golf to their golf merit badge. Is yeah. that a big deal? Who knows? We'll What's find out. Um, but before we get into all that, let's take a moment to thank our sponsors today. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and Manscaped's here to get you looking your best from head to toe. The all-new Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is designed to elevate your grooming game and help you shine like the heartthrob you are. So join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GRIPLOCKED. We've told you about the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra it a rocks. bunch. It has skin-safe technology. It yep. comes with the brightest LED spotlight yet. That way, well, you can... I and just and use mine as a also, flashlight in, in the basement. That is an option. Yeah. Um, not exactly what it's designed for, but hey. <laughs> it's a price, yeah. It, it is good to minimize your EDC. Yeah. Just yeah. carry that. Yeah, yeah. You can okay. hit it with a shave, shine a little flashlight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Perfect. And it looks like it would fit that build, it's too. True. Um, it true. Does, it doesn't double as a good weapon, though. Because that's true. Skin, skin safe, safe technology. Yeah. 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 Uh, but hey, that's not everything the Love Doctor ordered. This package also comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 nose hair trimmer, their liquid formulations, and two free goodies the Shed Travel Bag and Boxers 2.0. And to top it all off, there's Manscaped's refined cologne. It's the Valentine's Day touch to your grooming routine that'll just put everything over the edge. So elevate your entire grooming routine with the Performance Package 5.0. Uh, and for your bearded bros out there, um, you also have the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, which is designed to shape your scruff effortlessly, and it sculpts cheek lines and maintains beard styles, giving you that suave look for your yes. romantic moment. So seemingly seamlessly handling even thicker beards, it's a perfect tool for a polished, date-ready appearance. So if any of that interests you, which it all should, get 20% off and free shipping with the code GRIPLOCKED over at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code GRIPLOCKED. Be ready for Valentine's Day. Guys, we've got heck of hats going on right now. Like if you're, we if do. you're just, this is the hat trifecta. Yeah, okay. If you look at Trevor right now, those of you listening, Trevor's got the nice It's athlete, called the G. It, the it's G. got the G. What what's that style of hat called? Trucker. Just a trucker hat. Trucker, just like a trucker like baseball cap kind of kind of thing going hat. on, you know. <laughs> Hunter's got the nice dad hat, classic dad hat. And then what's this? Oh, what is that? Oh, the we've got the trucker. foam trucker. We've done it. I I've been highly anticipating having a foundation hat that's on the foam trucker hat, and I'm thankful that it's the Grip Lock logo is the first thing to go on there. If you want to look just like Big Con, you're gonna pick yourself one up, and just you're like Big help Con us or better, or life or better, yeah, yeah. yeah, just like Big Con or better, or you better. will not look worse than me. Difficult. Yeah. Um, we're so close to overtaking tour life in the merch race. We're so close. One important. Note I didn't since, think we'd get this close. One you important know Brody, note man, since last. Anything. One important note since last week's episode is the Connor horse is now the number one selling podcast merch item in general. <laughs> Wait, Thank are you, so you being for, for that, real? Everybody. Yeah, so the Connor horse has overtaken. Connor horse versus tour life is the new battle. <laughs> oh, so Connor horse is outselling Yuli horse. That's so hilarious. Quite That's, so That's really funny. funny. Uh, get ready. Well, the rumor is that Brody has just been buying up the tour life merch on purpose just to crank their numbers up. I can confirm he's bought a lot of it yeah. as the person placing the order for so. Brody's tour life merch. Here's the thing, guys. Please don't stop. Please don't <laughs> stop. I, because bro, am I allowed to say that Brody's about to be in town? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because Brody, I don't know why we're not doing anything secretive, but Brody is literally coming into town in like a couple hours. Not a couple, in like 45 minutes. In like 45 <laughs> minutes. And we're going to have to hear him just like him and Silas together just yapping yeah. about the wow. toy life. He's merch. literally over the Pacific Ocean right now. <laughs> The Pacific Ocean? Never mind. He's, he's a ways away from us. All right. Well, let's get into some actual disc golf here. Patreon question of the week is going to kick us off. If you don't know where this comes from. It's patreon.com slash foundation disc golf. We have a weekly Heiser Club mailbag. The Heiser Club is what we call our, you know, club. Um, nope. If you want to be a part of it, you can head over the there. the championship because it's There is. Like the Heiser Club championship. Left. You have two days left to register. Um, if you subscribe to our Patreon at an annual level at the 10 or $20 tier, you will automatically earn your invite to this year's Heiser Club Championship. It should happen early fall or uh, yeah, late summer, early fall, somewhere in that range. Um, it'll be a second annual Heiser Club Championship. You get to play disc golf with us, a little ripped revenge, some random draw doubles, do an office tour, which will be the new office. 
So even if you came last year, you have something new to see. Um, office tour, warehouse tour, pizza party. Last year, we played some guts with Brody Heck and yeah. uh, all the other people there. Mess around with the tech disc. Uh, and then one of you will be crowned a Heiser Club champion. So that sounds interesting to you. Again, and one you have of you two days. will be crowned Connor's new best friend. And you That's also true. get yeah, it's the not that hard. annual Heiser Club disc, which if you subscribe annually on the $5 tier, you also get the Heiser Club disc as well. So $5 tier, if you're like, eh, Heiser Club championship, I'm not traveling to Lynchburg. That's fine. Just subscribe annually on the $5 tier and you still get the annual disc plus all the great benefits like exclusive monthly videos, contests, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes updates. A lot of times we brainstorm with you all to be like, hey, if we were to do this, what would you think? How would you react? Would you like it? Um, and we get a lot of our content ideas from you all. So a lot of fun going on over there. But this one comes from Triple T. What up, he said, T? what is more important for a disc golf course? Good T pads that are textured long and level or good baskets that catch discs well mm. another way to ask might be which is worse uneven slippery short tee pads or cheap old tilted baskets with crooked cages that spit out good putts if you had to choose one over the other which are you choosing gotta have those tee pads man. i think it depends because i think it you depends have on, to choose one or the other well it depends on if if it's like peaks view park okay short okay. course or like or timber like any, anywhere where it's a short course i'd rather have nicer baskets than tee pads because you're not putting that much uh like force into your run up and your plants that's and everything logical. that's fair but but we're gonna make at, you choose if you're one. at new london and you gotta throw hard or you're at on a, on a course fall let's, creek let's just say like, i'd rather have good what you have more to, often than not which one would you prefer like a more course no let's go let's go fully extreme t pads oh. let's go this okay never mind my i would answer, i was just gonna say that, i was just gonna say you have to get rid of one permanently no, that, either good t pads are all gone or good <laughs> baskets are all gone which one? that point makes sense i i just like for me it's very frustrating to play disc golf when you don't have good tee pads because you yeah, feel same. like, and I, I mostly get a full dose of this when we go to Lynchburg College and you feel like you just can't throw the shot you want to throw yes. because you're scared of getting hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, that's just really frustrating when you throw a bad shot and you know, like a lot of people make excuses about the tee pads, but sometimes like, you know, you just couldn't throw the shot you wanted yes. because you were going to hurt yourself. And that's more frustrating than having a spit out. Right. And well, like, also getting hurt is worse yes. than missing. Yeah. At the end of the day, as long as the basket is standing upright and it has some amount of chains hanging from it like at least it's going to do something like at least i can still putt to the best of my ability at that basket and, and whatever happens happens but when the tee pad's bad like you just have to change the way you're playing disc golf now it might putt. be because all three of us aren't great putters yes but like realistically everything is i don't think my putting percentage changes that no. much no. in a really bad basket not at all i just have something to blame it on so i'm like not trying my, a better time my yeah. putts that are good are hitting mostly either dead center or low left and low left doesn't use chains no. at if, all. So I'm just hyzer into the bucket. And if I hit dead center, there's a chance I just hit the pole anyways. If we and ever it goes install in. a course, I think But like 50 go footers, I'm not making. But I do stick to what I said. Because like, like one of the, my favorite courses ever near like my parents' house in Charlotte, uh, Crooked Creek Park, they uh, you don't there's no tee pads. Yeah. And most of the places that you're thrown from are dirt and have roots growing through it and everything like that. But it just doesn't affect you because you're throwing 150 foot shots. As long as it, honestly though too, Connor, as long as it is dry... Yeah, yeah. And as long as it's dry, as long as it's dry and level, That's I don't really care what it is that I'm throwing on. Mm -hmm. um, so like that is fair because like I mean we've played um, we've played courses before where you're just throwing on grass and like yeah if it grass is an awesome tee pad yeah. if it's flat and level yeah like if you're just throwing off a tee box I, I don't have a problem with that I was thinking um, we there's like golf tournaments out there that like they'll do a special tournament where they take the normal hole and they widen it to like basically. <laughs> I don't know, four foot radius circle. So like it That's makes fun. it makes it very easy to chip in, get hole ones. That would be a fun disc golf concept. We develop eighteen baskets that are like three times the current, current <laughs> diameter of the chain reach uh -huh. and that's what the baskets are like so like the throw-ins are just all over the place yeah. think about how heavy that would be though you need a crane Ooh. <laughs> you would you ever try to hoist up one of those prodigy baskets by yourself no. i have yeah oh, as yeah, a freshman way. on the disc oh my drag gosh. Them out of the facility yes. one time the basket fell on me there is no hazing in liberty club sports but as a freshman on the disc golf team, you definitely <laughs> always had to put that thing on your that shoulder and try so to get it in heavy. and out of there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, luckily, yeah. coach eventually got the one the base that had a wheel that <laughs> helped. It, it still is heavy though. Still, still hard. I was wheeling but like my freshman year. Like I literally would just like throw it on my shoulder uh -huh. and just like yeah, take dude. a few steps. It, those things sucked. I if you, you, if you had like like Ryan, who was my doubles partner, he would normally help. Yeah, and carry. And if you had two people, the, then you're fine. With buddy, mm -hmm. yeah. but with one person, those I mean, things are tanks, dude. Yeah, they are horses.
Um, all right, well, some off-season movement. Obviously, it slowed down. There's not a lot to talk about here, but the big move from this past week was Nicolas Antela has announced that he's staying with Discmania. He's just been promoted to their Sky team. So that now contains Nicolas, Gannon, and Kyle Klein. If you remember, he had previously made a post of like closing the chapter in his career. He never said he was leaving Discmania, but the way he wrote it, it made everyone think he's leaving Discmania because he was like thanking them for all their support, blah, 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 closing the chapter, ready to open the next one. It all, all the wording felt like I'm leaving Discmania, but it never mm-hmm. said it. So there was actually, shout out, a few people speculated that from the beginning. They were like, I think he's staying with Discmania. And I'm like, I think you're just being hopeful. Like, mm-hmm. I think you're a little hopeless romantic there. Um, but no, they were right. Ooh. They well, were right. Never, or they we'll never know, though, hopeless. if there was an actual time period where he was leaving. Like, does he confirm that? I believe... I feel like I feel like if he not was, on social media, if, I feel like he someone might have said that he went on a podcast, like a Finnish podcast, I think, yeah. and said like it was I'm always part, part of the plan. plan. I was just saying, but I don't, I don't quote me on that. If I don't it was remember. always part of the plan, I feel like he would come out and say like, yeah, that was just kind of the fun thing we decided to do. If it wasn't part of the plan, I don't think he'll say say anything because I think Discmania PR wise, they'd rather have people believe he they never were going to lose him. Yeah, um, because there's yeah. obviously a chance that. He decided to leave maybe before he had an offer or maybe he did and it fell through and then was like, all right, guys, I'm coming back. I feel like because the way he worded the post, he never said the typical like goodbye to this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like like a chapter is when you read back it, it feels like intentional, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like where I said a bunch of a little bit misleading. Yeah, but yeah, it was on purpose. It was fun, yeah. you know. It worked out, and it was a. It's a key, I think, for a key piece for Discmania to keep him because it keeps their tie to the European market in general. Niklas is also just a phenomenal player in general, um, and so it it definitely helps, you know, having the three headed monster of Kyle, Niklas, Gannon. That definitely helps going into the season um, after losing Eagle and then Simon last year. So it was it was pretty crucial for them to keep him. Um, but I was surprised that they kept him because I was I was in the boat that I thought he was gone, and I thought for sure he was joining Vino Makala over at Prodigy. Yeah, that's what I thought. Was how, I mean, that would have been the fit. Yeah, that would have made sense. But now, speaking of Prodigy, they have announced their core team this year, which their core team is basically their highest level team. Most of the stuff within teams doesn't matter that much, um, but basically, if you're on the highest level team, you get signature discs, best tour level structure. discs, like you, you get the best payment structure, all of that. So yeah. when you see players move within teams, it doesn't really matter to the outside person. Like to us, all these players are still just going to be throwing Prodigy. Um, but internally, it means Prodigy is supporting these players on a higher yeah. level. So you can kind of see where they're putting eggs in different baskets. So um, the I'll just go over the entire team, but there's a few key additions. First off, Aiden Scott. Um, that's a big promotion for Aiden there. I don't ever there. remember between... What there's there's Aiden Scott, Evan Scott, and Evan Smith are all the same person. <laughs> <laughs> like conspiracy I, the, theory. Now, because Aiden is like the newest kind of on the scene of that bunch, I believe. Like he, like I, if I had a power rank, the I three believe... the three Musketeers right now, I think it's Evan Scott, Evan Smith, Aiden Scott. <laughs> See if that's right. I don't know. That. I, They're I'm all the same person. Me. Which yeah. one's with Clash? He's the dirty one. Evan Smith. Okay, so then it's Evan Smith, Evan, Evan Scott. Scott is with he's, DGA he's, now. Which one's he was the young one? Before? I don't know, man. I don't They're know. They're the same people. So Aiden Scott came, was the runner up to the rookie of the right. year this year. So he's the newest one on the scene. Okay. Um, okay. And from I read somewhere that he Dude. is not eligible for Pro Tour player rookie of the year this upcoming season because there, like there's different there's, there's different criteria. stipulations for criteria. for Pro Tour and yeah. just general rookie of the year because like you can win PDJ rookie of the year by playing a bunch of A tiers right? right but the Pro Tour rookie of the year but for some reason I read and I don't know if it was a mistype because the tweet sounded like they were saying he oh. was up but then the way they wrote it was saying he wasn't so. I don't know, something to be on the lookout, but he's an up and coming player. I'm getting to the bottom of this. Uh, should be touring more this year with the support on the core team. Kale LaVisca, always, you know, he's synonymous with Prodigy. He's on their core team. Another promotion here, Chantel Budinsky, Miss Frisbee. Shout out. She is now on their core team, the only FPO player on Prodigy's core team. So wow. That's, crazy. That's huge. That's crazy. They used um, to have Paige and Cat. <laughs> yeah, they used to have Paige and Cat. And Sarah Holcomb at some point. And Sarah Holcomb at some point. Yeah. Um, Paige and I mean Paige and Cat were basically synonymous. Evan with Smith for is thirty fifth in the world. He's top Evan. He's the top Evan. Um, Evan? He was the clash one. Evan Scott is fiftieth. 
he is the one that he's was the one with that played at Battle for Bedford. He's the one right? at Battle for Bedford. Yeah, he's that still, looks still that on 17. Discraft yes. according to here, but he's looks DGA. Very young. You say? Mm -hmm. I think one of them is DGA. Now we'll get to that. A little oh, bit. did the one from Clash go to DGA? I don't, I don't know, know, man. Evan Smith, Evan Scott, Aiden Scott. Boom, boom, boom. Let's keep uh, it. Ezra Robinson. <laughs> I don't know if Ezra Robinson is a promotion to the core team. I feel like he is, but Ezra Robinson's on the core team alongside Isaac Robinson. Kevin Jones, another staple. Luke Humphreys, another staple. Manabu Kajiyama, another staple there. And Vino Makala. Those you know what, are their core what's team What's crazy now. about this is that. I don't think we ever would have expected that Ezra and Isaac Robinson, especially like oh, Ezra Robinson, who's kind of stat. emerged, like are those are the top two guys. Like Kevin Jones is not one of the top two guys on mm. that team. Let me see if I can find this stat. Just how it be. Because uh, this kind of blew my mind a little bit. They, I think it was the Pro Tour that posted it. I'm hoping I can find it. It wasn't that long ago. Um, the like brother stats between Ezra and Isaac. And like, here it is. Yeah, listen to this. So Robinson bros, head to head stats from this 2023 season. Reminder, one of these won two majors. The other one. He's like 19th in the world. Ezra Robinson won, won a, silver. a silver event, I think was it. Yeah. Okay, so keep that in He's mind. He's dirty Very, though. Ezra was underrated one player, all year. Isaac Robinson was like, he could be your player of the year. Yeah. Because he won two mm -hmm. majors. Ezra Robinson was like, he's an up and coming player. He's solid. Keep that in mind when you hear these stats. Average event rating, Isaac Robinson 1038, Ezra Robinson 1035, within like three points of each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Birdie percentage, Isaac Robinson 46%, Ezra Robinson 42%. Bogey percentage, within 0.01% of each other at wow. 9.78 for Isaac and 9.79 for Ezra. Circle 1X putting, Isaac Robinson 84.93%. Ezra Robinson, 84.37%. Basically it's identical. It's crazy that Isaac is like not a great C1X putter statistics-wise. It's, but just, when he gets it's hot, just that when he gets hot, he, he doesn't, doesn't miss, miss any mm. of them. And then <laughs> driving OB percentage, 6.10% for Isaac, 6.16% for Ezra. So oh basically, gosh. now I will say they, their it, it mirror does image look like, of each other on these stats. Yeah, I will say it looked based on how random some of those stats are. They definitely went ahead and picked the ones that were closest to yeah, each other. But, but there, there are some relevant ones. There's there. some very relevant yeah, stats here. For but sure. it basically, what it shows me is Isaac Robinson just got hot at the right times. Yeah. Well, but you're also got to remember there could be like three or four incredibly important stats that are on there yes. that Isaac has a massive lead in. That could be. Yeah. 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 So they, I just, they, they just, should. but the average round rating, I, yeah, I would average agree. Average ratings are overall. Ezra, just like, yeah. Ezra was very good last season and he wasn't really getting a lot of talk because he wasn't he always wasn't in winning. contention. And yeah, he only won one silver. Um, and Isaac, like, now Isaac was, is not like streaky as in like, I would say like Simon can be very streaky at times as if as in he might fall off the face of the planet during events like Isaac he had a couple bad finishes but like I think he did have a pretty good stretch of the Let's season. Let's go stat Mando head to head between the two of them. Yeah, that'd be that interesting. That could be interesting. He had a good stretch of the season where he was pretty consistent and obviously like in the big tournaments he won, you know, two majors, but yeah, Ezra is very good. Like Ezra is solid. I think it'll be interesting just to see like they got to lean into the brother thing. How close mm -hmm. this is. So head to head, yeah, Isaac Robinson's 15, 6, and 1 against Ezra last so. season with three wins, three <laughs> seconds, three thirds. Their top yeah. 10 percentage, Isaac Robinson at 63%, Ezra at 36%. So there's definitely some cherry picking of yeah, stats going on. It, it, I, whenever I wasn't I wasn't quite onto him, and then I and then they put in OB throw percentage at the end. I'm like, why don't we throw <laughs> that one in there? They, I think that they jumped a little bit in the yeah. stats. But hey, that's the game. It was that's still, the stat game. It's still like Respect it. <laughs> I was surprised because the average event rating, like well, you say what you want about ratings. They both played a lot of the same events. Yeah. So it shows like they were playing on average very close to each other skill wise. Yeah. Um, and hey, it was it you know it pays to get hot at the right time. Amen. Uh, brother. Now this just like when Connor got that hat. Yeah. Pays right, to get boys. hot, at the, pays right to get hot yeah. at the right time. Right. Just in time for Birdie getting down. Yeah. <laughs> now you Chris get that hug. I'm gonna try. Chris and Tatar <laughs> announced. <laughs> oh, am I even? Be, I don't <laughs> think I can. Not, dude. I don't think I can translate it on my computer. My goal in life Dang is to get a hug. But I can translate it on my phone. My goal in life is to get a hug from Brody without initiating it. Yeah, well, good luck with well, that. Well, the only way is like he well, listens it's, to Griplock. It's a lifelong goal. It can't be easy. He listens to Griplock, <laughs> and so I think he will at some point just walk in and hug you just for the that fun of it. That is true. I'm not initiating it right now. It can't right be now. a bit, though. I'm not initiating there has it right to, now. It has to be genuine. Maybe if I maybe If, if I you got like today, an ace. Yeah. You got maybe, an ace. I'll just like, but like, I'm not going to initiate it. I'll just be like, ah! Just like, like, do ah, that. Okay, stick your hands ah, up. <laughs> just look at him. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> what a crazy question. Like, we both find ourselves right here. Give me right a <laughs> brace right now. 
Oh, I wish someone would hug me right now or something. I don't know. Yeah, like, you guys remember that rule? Like, someone has to hug me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kristen Tatar has announced a new deal with Porsche Estonia. That so, is so sick, dude. Porsche Estonia and World Women's I, Disc Golf okay. Leader. Is anybody else think it's funny that, like, Kristen keeps getting these deals, and I don't really know how it works, but it's just funny. Like, she's getting all these huge names, like Nike, Nike Porsche. Porsche. They're always followed by Estonia. So, like, I just think it's funny that, like, she's getting these huge names. And, like, good for her. It's awesome. But, like, they're always, like, the Estonian version of it. Like, yeah. is she going to get Amazon Estonia next? She's going to have every big, big company How in the big world. is, like, Porsche Estonia? Would it be, like, if we got, like, That's what I'm wondering. Like, Toyota what is Lynchburg? the significance of Porsche Estonia? Well, let's just say, how big is Estonia? It's not. It's not Population. big. What, is and Estonia? it's still Estonia. awesome. Like, I don't want to downplay yeah, Trevor it. Trevor just, just immediately <laughs> take 1.3 million. Is the uh, Porsche Esto- is Estonia's population million population city? Um, so let's see. It would be like also is Porsche getting, Estonia like a is it like a dealership? I think so. It would be like getting Porsche Dallas. Okay, that's sick. That's, that's sick. Fun. That's really Dallas sick. is also one point three million. That's oh go. my gosh. Either way, it says Porsche. Yeah, it doesn't. As I'm saying, <laughs> well, it's she still comes with all the clout. Porsche on right. her she's, shirt. She still <laughs> got the Nike check and the Porsche logo on it's her good. shirt. <laughs> that's yeah. so sick. So did Porsche. she have Gatorade too? I think at one point. No, Nicklaus has Gatorade. He has Gatorade what? Finland. Finland. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> what the heck? Why can't I get Gatorade Lynchburg? <laughs> Well, the difference is we just don't have city spot level sponsors. Stupid. Uh, anywho, maybe we can get like Gatorade Gables Drive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Porsche Estonia and World's Women Disc Golf leader Kristen Tatar signed a cooperation agreement. Kristen gets to use her Porsche Macan. Is that how you pronounce that? M-A-C-A-N? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. She's got a Macan. Porsche already. While she stays in her homeland with Porsche times drive times Kristen Tatar written on the warranty symbolizing one of three their brands: SUVs. Porsche, Porsche Drive Rental Service, and Disc Golf's joint part. This is Drive. So oh, they're giving her a Porsche to drive when she's when in she's Estonia. in Estonia. She has a Porsche. That's, That's pretty. Cool. No wonder she's touring in Europe so much. She gets to whip around a Porsche. According to UC Parnpu, the representative. Of, <laughs> what? I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, representative of Porsche Estonia, Auto 100 board members, and good parallels can be brought between Porsche and disc golf. Precision, acceleration, ultimate focus, and focus are keywords. <laughs> this yeah. is translated from yeah Estonian. So. However, being and staying on top of the world requires a lot of effort, training, and insane logistics between different countries and disc golf tracks, which is why we're glad that we can continue contribute at a local level to supporting Kristen and thus making Estonian sports landscape more visible worldwide. According to yeah. Kristen Zatar, the Porsche car brand has been fond of her for a long time. I think it means she's been fond of it for a long yeah. time. Well, Porsche wouldn't surprise me if she owned a Porsche. Porsche is a brand for those who follow their dreams. This idea resonates with me very well to create something new and follow my own path. Um... Me in the world of disc golf and Porsche in the world of motorsports, commented Tatar. That's sick. I, I mean, she is just literally Thanos collecting all the sickest logos to have on her shirt. That is very cool. I wonder how hard it is to learn Estonian. What I think it would be really fun to t- try and like learn as much as I can before USDDC and then walk up to her in silver and just start talking to them in Estonian. Think about how crazy I would that be is. on the inn immediately. Think I'll about just, like, how crazy that is like, that like that that just that like in, in the grand scheme of the world. That Estonia is like a pretty small area. Again, it's the size of Dallas. Yeah. Basically. Imagine if Dallas, somewhere the size of Dallas, had their own language. That's crazy. It's crazy. That is. You don't have to imagine and it. It's true with Estonia. It, well, it's is also Estonian basically like, like Dallas. I wonder if yeah. Estonian like you walk is down and people start calling you y'all. Like is Estonian a similar <laughs> <use> y'all? <laughs> a similar dialect to like other like think, Scandinavian I don't languages? Know. I'm not gonna speak on it because Good idea. I've called her Finnish ten times so, no. <laughs> at least. Well, just like, you know, the Macan the Macan is like their like crossover it's like, SUV. like small SUV I saw her getting in type it. thing. It's a it's a Finnish MSRP language. starting at sixty thousand dollars goes to about eighty thousand dollars, so Seventy thousand dollar car. So, so it is. It's, I like, wouldn't be upset. It's I got her name why. on the side. They put her signature on the side of the car. Should That's have been nine so eleven though. Way cooler. So it is Estonian, like it's its own language, but it is a Finnic language. Um, so okay. I guess it is probably like has shared similarities. We just learn all sorts of things. On I'm gonna this learn show. Estonian. That actually be and a people funny just punishment. Think we're very dumb. And we just learned so many things, and like at this point, I think the Grip Lock logo is just a representation of like you want to better yourself and you want to grow yourself. So like if you if there was a way to like wear the Grip Lock logo, it would just tell everyone around you like, hey, I'm a lifelong learner. You know? Yeah. I think it'd be a really funny punishment that one of us they lose (laughs) a challenge and you have to dedicate yourself to like a certain amount of time of Estonian per week. 
And when USDGC comes around, you have to approach Kristen Tatar and try and have a conversation with her in Estonian. I don't think that's technically offensive, but no, 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 no. You're trying to learn their, like you're not going to be like rude about it. You're trying to legitimately learn their language. And what is Hunter doing right now? Galpidelukus. That's grip lock. That's grip lock in Estonian. So wow. I think I got to make some merch with I can that make on it. No, we need to know what in the bag is in Estonian because Brad's going to need that. That's all the fair. Well, it's, it's, it's Brad's probably podcast. heard it. Before. I'll just hit it. Hit it one more time here. That's in the Copy bag. Copy the locals. <laughs> no, that's good. grip locked. That's sick. Let's try it. Let's Finish go in the bag. Finish is kind of wild. Yeah. Oh, in the bag is just one word. Oh. Probably doesn't directly translate. That can't directly translate. Yeah. It has to. I don't know. English is Coitis. stupid. Coitis. The more I try to teach a toddler how to talk, the more I realize that our language is ridiculous. Our language mm. doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it makes sense. I understand but it. But like sense. <laughs> Are you talking money? Are we talking math? <laughs> <laughs> Context clues, baby. Context yeah. Clues. No, the biggest one would be like... But am sale, I talking about sale. like a baby? He'll point to a talking- zero. He'll point to a zero. And this isn't to do with the English language really. But he points to a zero and he says, oh. And I'm like... But it's a little taller and narrower, so now it becomes zero, <laughs> and it's in the context of numbers. I'm like, how did we ever get hey, here? Hey, your kid's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, just like, come on, man, that's a zero. Stupid. My <laughs> son's doing calculus. I know that circle I've been telling you is O the whole time, and this circle is not O, but... But get it you'll together. Fig- yeah, come on, right. figure it out. <laughs> well, before we get into the fan favorite segment of Trevor's Trivia, which is all going to be about... So it's going to be an Estonian. It's just a how much finish do we know? Test. Wow. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, before we get into test. that, yeah, a finish line. We told yeah. you about Heiser Club Championship. You only have a few days. The other thing you only have a few days to take advantage of is Foundation Care being included on your order. In the month of January, all orders Heck include yeah, huh? Foundation Care. So you have 30 days to try, use your disc however you want. You don't like it, you send it back and you exchange it for a different one that you know you love. Um, mm. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, which it should because this is the best opportunity to try a new disc, you have till January 31st to have it included on your order back February 1st. It comes back where it's a $2 additional add-on. Still going to be on the site, but a $2 additional add-on. So Heck yeah. You have that to bit, try out Gyro was, right now? What is that, Wednesday? Little, feeling Wednesday. a little frisky because of Eagle McMahon? Well, I hope you don't want to try Gyro because like it's not in stock anywhere. <laughs> no, we've got some. We got some. They, have you ever heard of the Insanity, around, my brother? Sure the insanity's we've great. got dummy Insanities right now. Think about insanity's if that phenomenal. had been around like years and years and years ago whenever we were getting It would have been dangerous. Oh yeah, gosh, I would have been doing that all the time. Yeah. That'd be so sick. All right, well, let's see. fan favorite segment, Trevor's trivia. What do you got for us? The this week? best segment across all of our podcast. It is all the foundation podcast. It is the best segment. I, I kind of feel bad favorite. for Edwin of Edwin's stats. Yeah, having Ooh. to go up against having Trevor's. to live in Trevor's shadow. Yeah, yeah. 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 Poor yeah. guy. How do we? I need to get. I need merch to add Trevor's trivia. Yeah, Trevor's okay. trivia. Trivia yeah. with Trevor. We all need to. We all. We all need to invent a segment and have merch for it. Just, come on, guys. Put it Mine on the list. Is. We should get Silas Selects merch. Yeah, That's Silas great. Selects. Because then Silas will be like, "What do I do? Do I push tour life? Or oh! push Silas Selects? Just make him just the sick. Let's make a new merch. segment called Brody Smith Smile, and we just all smile for thirty seconds. Sponsored by Brody Smith, and we can make shirts for it. Dude, <laughs> it's just Brody Smith smiling. What if we could use the Dark Horse logo for it? Oh, we just put a smile. <laughs> Make, make the make horse the dark smile. horse smile. <laughs> Imagine that horse is a big old cheesy no, toothy no. grin. Right. The smiling Everybody, horse is a grip lock merch now. <laughs> Everybody ready for the for the dark horse smile segment? Here we go. That was awesome. That was great. Pick awesome. up merch. All right. Yeah. You can check out the merch and foundation. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that one. I can't. Oh. I'm sorry. Just okay, so here's it. the thing. We are gonna lean into the gyro theme. I wanna okay. make sure you guys are really up to date. Uh, somebody just released a quiz, uh, a sporical quiz, where they have all the updated gyro molds wow. through January. Wow. So, okay. like, all of them. But we're not going to do it like we usually do, where I'm just letting you guys rapid fire. Yes, That's sir. too easy. Thank you. The way this game works is Hunter has to taboo describe a mold to you. You have to say it, and then it counts. Um, and that's how, what if I that's don't, how this game's okay. going to work. All right. And Gyro molds are only hard. Okay, only... What, but like, what if I just say you can literally disc say, and Connor goes hex. I'm like, perfect, okay, frisbee, and then Connor goes that's, volt. That's cheating. But I'm saying, like, how do you know what I'm thinking? You just, just, be, just honor system. Just it? honor system yeah. it. Just okay. try to describe a mold. And if he said if he says the wrong one, but you were making an attempt, I'll still count it. Like, okay, if, like if you were making a legitimate attempt, I can t- I'll be able to tell obviously because you won't just be being silly. Um, and I'm gonna and the you, taboo gotcha. works where I just can't say the word. Basically. I thought you, yeah, you can say any. I'm gonna say you can say anything but the word. And to streamline on this list too. There's 66 no, more. No, um, 
I thought yes, you were MVP showing him a disc. And okay, he had to describe you guys are gonna have two minutes. Ready, set, go. Uh, non gyro, f- plain, really fast, private. Interesting that you start with pilot. Start there, really it, fast. It, it counts. <laughs> the, the plane's fast. Pilot counts though. <laughs> Jet. Yep. Okay. Um, you use this if you want to get a steady shot with a camera. Also non gyro. The uh, gimbal. <laughs> steady shot. With it just went to Mono, my head. Monopod. Steady cam. Okay, Ste- we're going to ignore that one. Steady shot with a camera? Uh, gyro? Non gyro? Non gyro. Uh, because all the, all the, all the gyro <laughs> ones are freaking science words you got to be smart with. Oh, I'm smart, Hunter. <laughs> well, no, I smart. have to be smart, not you. Me. No, he is I have crazy to. Crazy smart. Uh, a shape like an octagon, but just the first three letters of it. Octane. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was going for. <laughs> it's a shape like an octagon. Also, Pentagon. it can also be a blank hex. Key. Hex. Yeah. There you okay. go. Uh, Give me more. Describe molds to me, and then maybe I'll get the one name minute of the down. One minute to go. Oh, okay. A seven speed. Seven. It's like a T bird. Uh, the um, Trevor throws one occasionally. <laughs> Trevor turned this into the molt. Volt. <laughs> yeah. Um, ooh, ooh. Tara was the other one you were describing. Nope. They were both a volt, but thank you. Okay. You got two. <laughs> Sure, I guess. James Conrad puts with this. Also can be Nomad. Uh Simon Lazat's newest Pixel. Simon Lazat's No, he doesn't have another one, does he? Okay. Yeah, he does. He's like traveling I don't know it. like traveling through Circus. Uh Teleport. Uh, oh if time lapse. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Teleport's another one. Yeah, it is. Hit him with it. <laughs> um Give me a give me a give me the, seconds. Give me the other one. Give me the I'm, I'm, can I do it to Hunter now? Yeah, please. Do the, the really floaty one. The, the lot of glide. Spin. Of, glitch. There we go. Uh, ion. Yeah. Adam. Yeah, yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. Which uh, the other one. For? The other Which one is, is going for? shaped like a circle. <laughs> uh, uplink. Uplink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, dang, what is he trying to get me to say here? You're Matrix. You're talking Reactor. Up. You guys suck. You got, like, you got 12. That was a hard game. That was a hard game. Why was it funny that you were like, like, like you could have just been like, okay, the putter that I put with this past year, the oh, putter no, that Simon to, puts with. I was trying to like not and you describe went straight the to disc. streamline. <laughs> I was trying. Well, I was trying not to describe the disc like flight wise. I was trying to like describe, like like describe the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying. Because gotcha. yeah. like, I feel like in tap, if I want they something have, like, that somebody else has really bad, I might blank it. Envy. But like the <laughs> the really popular movie with Keanu uh, Keanu Reeves or whatever, where you the red pill, the blue pill, the movie. Matrix. Matrix. <laughs> but I'm saying the because like I feel like on actual taboo, it probably had like the flight numbers would have been not allowed. There'd been a list. The, yeah, like, I was letting you have free reign. I know, but I he was trying to get you a stabilizer. He said yeah, the stabilizer. gimbal. Oh, that's, <laughs> the because well, so, the streamline was all just what like say, non-science steady, names. Steady out or whatever. <laughs> the streamline was all like non-science names because I was like I immediately went ion volt and I was like get away from that. Pilot, jet, like those are all easy. You went into fight or flight. Yeah, and I went flight. Right. What, to did, jet. He, what did he say <laughs> when you said it was really fast plane? What was the first thing you he said? said? Pilot. Oh, pilot. Because he said plane. So yeah. that was yeah. fun. That was a fun game. It's always tough. I enjoyed that. That was the, hey, it's hard being on the spot. It always is. It's fun. I, I love those games. All right. This is the most fascinating story of the So I like getting a break right from the rapid fire because yeah. sometimes my brain shuts down and I feel like a poop. Yeah. Don't feel like a poop. Don't feel like a poop. <laughs> So it just came out uh, January 27th, two days ago, that Jeremy Rusco is to purchase the Emporia Country Club. So according to an email that was sent to members this week, the Emporia Country Club is changing hands next month, a year after it was purchased by a local investment group. So last year it was bought by a local investment group with hopes of restoring the country club, I guess technically like what it once was, try to bring it uh, back on the golf front. <clears throat> a year later, I guess they're abandoning the ship, must not have worked out too well. Jeremy Rusco, it, uh, email was sent to members on January 24th, announcing the pending sale to Jeremy Rusco on February 1st. So in a few days, that is when it will become official. Well, people were commenting like the area was never really, like it wasn't any more meant like able to sustain country club prices. Like there were only a few wealthy people that were actually able to afford memberships and use it. And so like they're like hoping it gets used for something more applicable to the community i guess mm. I yeah know. so the organization that sold it highlighted the challenges faced including the decline in membership and the restaurant's inability to resonate with the community despite exploring Dang. redevelopment possibilities for the golf course the financial burden proved too substantial to garner community support we very much appreciate the trust that the members put into our group 
to try to preserve the club and we appre we apologize that we were unsuccessful the statement continued we unfortunately were unable to overcome the obstacles of the enormous amount of deferred maintenance staffing hurdles and lack of support from the community to reach the goals that we had set to achieve um so it was originally it was bought in december of 2022 it was this country club was established more than 100 years ago in 1911 when a group of local businessmen began meeting at the midway hotel to discuss the forming of we such establishment club. um trying to see so according to uh because i don't think we have the sale price no now I'm sure I don't was, know if we even have a sale price I'm of last sure it was year. In excess of a million dollars, surely, because it's a. Uh, so in 1961, in the Emporia Gazette, the number of properties were discussed and viewed as high potential locations. Sold um, 105 acres of a 500 acre lot they owed for $1,948 for 100 acres in 1961. <laughs> $1,000, wow. crazy. The That's clubhouse crazy. was built with a $15,000 price tag, which is equivalent to around $430,000 today. Opened up 110 years ago in 1912. Um, and then we don't have price tags beyond that. I don't Would think, but love to know what Rusko's got planned for this. That's what the ending, he, the ending thing basically says. We look forward to hearing, gosh. seeing what Jeremy has planned for the well, property and wishing best of luck. As much as I hate to do a plug, he, Jeremy Rusko is going to host a meeting at 7 PM on February 1st to answer oh questions. God. That explains why I say, yeah, he, he did agree to come on one of our podcasts. I won't mention, um, he, which one. One and, that you might find what life is like on tour. Yeah. <laughs> and he said it had to be after February 1st. That's probably why. They probably, let's all make guesses. What is Jerry Rusko going to do? I think he's, he's just going to zone it all and build residential houses. <laughs> no. I mean, I think this is obviously like they were, if they lose that, that is a core part of DDO. And so they were like, we don't really want to lose that. And it seemed like the investment group <laughs> was like, not? we're getting out of it. So we're selling this land you know, either it's going to be building houses, apartment, like that yeah. land is going to be gone. It's not going to be a golf course anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it was basically like, we can buy it and try to turn it into a, a disc golf I'll paradise. Be, yeah. I'll just be curious. Cause Rusko, like obviously Rusko made a bag whenever he sold dynamic. I'm sure he made, he did put most of that of into a uh, house of disc. Though. He did. He did reinvest a lot of it, but like he's, he's well off at this point. And, but he's not like a bajillionaire to where he would just throw away this money and not have a plan to like turn it into an investment. But well, we don't know what it was sold for though, because if it was sold a year ago and this investment group quickly realized yeah. this ain't working out. Well, they tried to do it as a golf course. I'm just saying like yeah. land is land. Now, sometimes golf courses, and I've seen this in the past a few times, golf courses are not always built on land that can be zoned for residential. Like sometimes it's like only this little part of the land would actually work because there's flood issues or this or that. So you never know uh, what the value of just the land is. But at the end of the day, it is a lot of land. So it couldn't have been cheap. So well, also the, the maintenance of it. Yeah. That's the interesting part is like that course, it works as a disc golf course on a golf course, right? Yeah. But, I, the, but like, I wonder what that course turns into when you lose the golf course aspect. Like, hole 16 right. still just as iconic. Hole 18 still a great finishing hole. But, like, there's some of the holes in the middle that, like... Because, like, there's no reason to have golf greens anymore. Correct. Yeah. There's no reason to have any golf course yeah. assets anymore. No, if I had to guess, I mean, most likely... It wouldn't surprise me if... Like he's going to say he wants to turn it into some kind of disc golf destination. I'm, I'm doubting that's the only thing that he'll do with the land just because it's a lot of land for just a disc golf course. And there's obviously a building on it too. Disc golf like, yeah, there, I, I'm like, you would have to reasonably assume that he's going to do a disc golf property of some sort, but like that just hasn't really been a profitable model for anybody. And in Kansas, like that does, I don't see that being profitable. So like, I'm just curious to know, like what if maybe he's just going to be like, yeah, we're going to, take part of the land, put a disc golf course to make sure we still preserve that. But like, then I'm going to build apartments. <laughs> I would highly doubt that. Like I, in my opinion, it's just like, I, I don't see him a, just throwing away the investment. I think that's exactly what he's doing. I think he's just, just because <sighs> they to see that. I think it's, I don't think he wants to make his money back off the land. I think he just knows long-term he can make his money back off of the success of DDO. And it's just like, a. I guess we, if we lose this course, this course has potential to, to at least the, the land to grow with the sport, man. I hope you talk to Jeff Springs about whereas keeping like, DDO for the next 10 years. Whereas like you're, you're, if you take away Emporia country club, you just have what Jones park. Yeah. Basically. I well, I, um, I guess, I don't know. We don't know what dynamic pays to rent the course each year. So like maybe he figures like, well, I'm at least going to make that every that's year. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a, I think it's a investment into DDO and like just, Hey, 
I am willing to just lose this money basically to keep DDO here. Because again, yeah, I I, if I hope not. Jones East it just can't it can't grow much bigger than it is. Or Jones, what do they call it? Supreme or whatever they the yeah, the combo course. Yeah. Like it the I've played that park and when they combine it Jones East and West, there's definitely more room for expansion. But like you're creating almost a safari golf course out there. Um Emporia Country Club, like yeah, it's a hundred acres we just read. Like you can do whatever you want with a hundred acres. Like it's a future proof property at least. So, and yeah. when I read it, that's what I'm expecting is like a, yeah, it'll be a pay to play course, you know, have a, a cheap restaurant, minimal staff on it, and then just maintain it somewhat throughout the year, but then just make sure it's pristine come DDO time. And that's our focus. Just have DDO, maybe one other, you know, Am mm. World can come out there, stuff like that, and like get it pristine before those events, put without a lot of money before that, and golf that's it. course staff though, keeping all that course pristine, like getting. No, it I'm pristine. not saying keeping it. No, pristine. but getting it. Pristine. But like, like pristine to a, a disc golf level is a lot different than like you don't need to cut right. it down to fairway people already, level. You don't need the greens people to be are already iffy about ECC, and then like if they show up the next year and it's like overgrown a little bit like i don't know i i would just be i will be surprised if there's not mention of like a redesign oh i'm sure there'll be a redesign i just don't think i don't he think will, he's using i don't think the, he'll use the whole course just to to do disc golf course or the whole land the whole property just do disc golf courses i don't know but we also don't we don't know how much he bought the land for but like i don't know if i i just don't like I don't see him as a guy who would just like make this huge investment because like, and maybe he has a bit a better vision for like making a profitable disc golf experience. Also, maybe Dynamic has a hand in this, and they're saying, "Hey, you buy it, we're gonna do this, this, and this." I don't know, but like, so far, the idea of just in the middle of nowhere, essentially, like Emporia, Kansas, has a disc golf community, but like, we saw the turnout at, at DDO last year. Like, it's not a huge population center. Like making a profitable disc golf experience when you have to maintain a lot of land and you pay a lot for the land, like, yeah, I don't know. I just I'm gonna be very interested to hear what he has to say. I, we'll, we'll have to see what he uh, what what's going on. It wouldn't surprise me if we're all like way off. If but the most reasonable assumption is of course disc golf related and DDO related. Yeah, I was trying to find uh, if there was any like what what's did they the population buy of Emporia? What did they buy it for <laughs> last year? And I can't really find. Cause, I mean, it's a hundred acres of land, and yeah, like I said, it depends on like what they can do with it. But if it's a hundred acres of land that can be used for housing and business and all that, like then it has to have some value. But also, I don't know where. Like, I don't even know if anything's being developed in Emporia. Emporia, I don't know Kansas about Emporia. has twenty four thousand population. What's the what's the population of Lynchburg? A hundred some. That's just Lynchburg, though, not Bedford County and everything else. So it's so Emporia is really small. Oh, Emporia is tiny. Yeah. Yeah. When okay. disc golf so comes maybe, to town, maybe like, the land isn't even valuable for developing or anything. Lynchburg like that. population's eighty thousand. Uh, okay. Warren Oaks a hundred, but I think if you go with the greater Lynchburg area, because like Forest, yeah, Virginia, for instance, is basically Lynchburg. Mm -hmm. Um, and Forest is another twelve thousand, eleven thousand. Uh, I don't know why I read that as twelve. 11,000. So, like, that's where you get cl you get close to 100,000 when you start trying factoring to get scale. Madison Heights. And I don't stuff. know. I don't know. But yeah, Emporia. So, Emporia is like the size of, uh, it's like two forests. If you're, uh, if mm. you're, but the, the problem is like, when I went, there wasn't really anything around it. Yeah. Like, we that's stayed at an Airbnb it's down there the and down, like, the shopping was just like one little strip. Mm hmm. And, and, and like maybe it. he's gonna get up there and literally just say like, "Hey, I had the resources to do it. I just wanted to make sure we keep ECC, and that's all he's gonna really say about it." And like, if that's all this is, then whatever. But if he gets up there and like has a real plan for a profitable disc golf related like property, I would just I'd be interested to hear because well, we just haven't. I really genuinely seen it. think that it's not the most profitable part of disc golf properties is events and they've had junior worlds am worlds world championship yeah. they have a the pro tour there every year the am side of ddo well, that, yeah that's what it that's comes what down i think to. is just like they want it they need it for their events right well I think that, that's it it comes it totally comes down to what um what their sale price was and what they're making off those events and also if dynamic discs had bought this i wouldn't even bat it an eye this wouldn't even shock me in the slightest it's the fact that it's Jeremy Rusco, who is still obviously involved, but is no longer in the position he was. Like, this is a personal purchase from the outside looking in. That's where I'm just curious to know, like, you know, it's a lot of money. 
what what what's the plan? I, that's maybe it's not. Last the only sale or maybe, price we or have maybe is fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> <maybe, yeah. laughs> Nineteen sixty, it only went for fifteen hundred bucks. I'd take that price. Yeah. I think I'd have bought it. I think yeah. I'd have bought it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I could have got it for less than three thousand dollars, I think I would have. I but think like I would have bought a hundred acres of land I don't know. anywhere, like anywhere near civilization. A hundred acres of land, Let's never just, mind with a building on it, has to be a sizable investment. Yeah, like it's a hundred acres. <laughs> Let's just get an idea of Emporia, Kansas real estate. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Let's see. Like we look Let's at other look land at, lots. Look at Emporia, Kansas. Okay, this lot twenty eight thousand dollars, one acre, and West Street. I think this is downtown two hundred seventy five thousand. But then two acres, a hundred thousand. Not it's like downtown. residential lots. There's a little there. I, we got to know where I the golf searched, course is in, in also in like relation. Like, is it really close to the town yeah, or is it way ev- out? Everything's close to the town. I Kansas. would figure. In Emporia. So in that case, like. Uh, so yeah, five bed, two bath, almost 2,000 square foot house so is on sale for 80 grand. Yeah. When was it built? It looks like it's falling apart, big hunt. I just, I mean, this one's a four bed, one and a half bath, 25, 2,400 square feet. Definitely cheaper than here. 000. Definitely cheaper than here though. This one looks brand new. Four hundred and twenty four thousand, four bed, three bath, three thousand square feet. I would just say it's cheap. It's cheap I would say there. sale price of that land, maybe it's not excess of a million dollars, but No, it's gotta be it's like gotta it's gotta be, be close a to a million. Yeah, it's gotta like it's to gotta million. be, surely. Is it cursed? Is the <laughs> land cursed? I mean, this three bed, two and a half bath, almost five thousand square foot home, six hundred thousand dollars. Are we moving to Emporia? No, there's a reason. Real estate's cheap out this there. Is, Dude, uh, you, Emac must be living in a <laughs> A pad out there, dude. What does Rusco's house look like, man? He's got to have the nicest house in Emporia. This is slightly unrelated, but in um, supposedly whenever Dave Grohl from Foo Fighters wanted to move back to the Lynchburg area, yeah, uh, he just told his like uh, realtor that he said he, he said this in his book. He said, "Now just keep in mind that I have no idea." what size an acre is. I've never had to think about an acre in my life. But he said that he wanted plenty of land and he wanted like like all this land and stuff like that because he wanted to build two houses on it. So he said, just find me anything that like, I don't know, I'm not really picky, but just like anything that's at least 400 acres. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> and his realtor came back to him and said... I can't find anything for 400 acres, but I was able to find 200 acres. How many, how much, and he how many was acres like, is your uncle's property? Like that's like, I think a, like, two, like 150 or 200. And that's huge. You can get yeah. lost on that property. And, and so she, <laughs> yeah. was, she was like, I wasn't able to find 400 acres, but I was able to find 200 acres. Like, okay. I think Emporia is okay, the size of 400 work. acres. And then whenever he got there to look at it, he was like, this is like a small town. <laughs> yeah. 400 acres in miles is 0. 0.6 square miles. I can't conceptualize that. <laughs> that isn't really. So if you run one lap, that would be no, that's, yeah, that's almost three miles. Yeah. To just run a lap around your property. Well. That's so like what if, he got with 200 is... Uh, if you started in one corner and ran to that corner, it's a 0.6 miles, and then you ran right to that corner. It's another, yeah, it's square. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a, a long lot ways. of land. That's, that's crazy. A, that is a long ways. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So Boy Scouts that have added funny. disc golf to the golf merit badge. Is this a big deal? I don't know. It's I don't cool. know anything about Boy Scouts. I don't but either. Jay were Redding... You, were you a Boy Scout? No, sir. Jay, Jay and Des Redding are, were big part of this they actually tagged us in the facebook post uh with like more information is how oh, i end up seeing they tagged it us? yeah jay redding jay shout redding out listener? new listener Please, dude <laughs> all right i love jay redding i mean when he breaks out that birdie train was so up. great so last week i talked about patrick brown yes sir yeah fire chicken <laughs> and You're going he, on with the sirs right now <laughs> he uh patrick brown i was talking about like how much i loved he's in chicken. the bag of the fire chicken and then he tagged us on instagram where he was no. watching it and said thanks for the shout out Wow. Yeah, that warms my heart, man. That, I was like, I I got giddy. Listen, I got very giddy. <laughs> we whenever so people Jay, if, from if, if Yeti tags us I'll freak about out, the birdie man. whistle, I'll freak out. we've been very blessed to have mind. this platform where people that actually have made like pretty significant differences in disc golf uh, are like watching us, and because like it happened a few times where I, it's funny that we were talking about Rusco today, where I'd mention him, and then he would like send me a selfie and be like, I'm paying attention. He's probably watching this right now. He's probably giggling. Yeah. Because he's like, guys, I bought that land for $10,000. Yeah, I just... <laughs> all like, I had to do was are, give him like... You guys are I hilarious. gave him 5,000 discs, custom stamp, and he just handed me the property. I'm sure we're, <laughs> I'm sure we're like 1,000% off the mark on that. So I hope you're enjoying it. And Jeremy, he's probably tearing it all down to... <laughs> um, but 
yeah, I, I think that's that's all. That's very cool that Patrick Brown that was, yeah. was watching. That's that was huge. Sick. Anyways, Who else should we try and get to come out of the shadows? Yeti. I want Yeti. Yeti's the next <laughs> one. Yeti I've done a Yeti impersonation one. twice. You should have heard that. Even if, yeah, you should have heard the call of the Yeti. Yeah, I called Yeti. him. I called You've him twice. Called. Birdie whistle. <laughs> All aboard. What's your subway order? This sandwich is for the yeah. camera guy. I mean, that's the greatest in the bag of all time. If you haven't seen that in the bag, look it up. Pulls out that rock that's worth like a billion dollars yeah. or was Putting at the time. world champion. He's like, anyways. Classic made to throw, baby. So he said, stoked to see, well, he and Dez, I don't know who wrote the post. Stoked to see the fruition of a two year project come together that will expose disc golf to hundreds of thousands of kids and young adults in just the first couple of years. Dez Redding and myself, Jay Yeti, oh, so it was him, have volunteered our time and 25 years of world-class play and educational background to the Boy Scouts of America and their efforts to bring disc golf into the BSA merit badge system. Awesome. Um, Steve Rose of Iowa led the connection between the Scouts and disc golf. This team we put together includes support from historical legends of the sport. Um, more players, more courses, more youth equals oh boy. Additional details of the amazing story coming. How do we so, get a badge? There's 1 million active Scouts registered aged 5 to 21. Scout projects have, of course, you know, assisted on hundreds of courses they actually i think they helped put in um Benches? elk creek i'm pretty sure i think this could low-key kind right. of be a big deal that's what i'm saying that's why i wanted to bring it up is yeah. like listen jay and des I, I i always have questions about it, are certain organizations doing enough to grow disc golf they're they grow disc golf they're out there at usdc in the hot sun Bussing in schools to like show these kids disc golf Freaking jay awesome. and, and des redding actually and rock. edge because Ed, they yeah. they work with edge found edge yeah J they co-found edge yeah they um, rock they also have like educate it's educational disc golf experience what edge stands for yeah they also have like packets where they've like built out for schools so it's like hey if you want to add something to your pe curriculum i think is how it works and you can yeah. just like they already got it all built out mm -hmm. so edge is doing a lot of cool stuff but yeah i and it's you know? a great PE curriculum, like activity, like of all the weird stuff we did, cup stacking and stuff, disc golf is cheap. We you used to do, do it in the gym. Say, that's why I we think used to do unicycles when I was in middle school. <laughs> that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, where I think this is, juggling. where I think this is big is like, you obviously, I don't know a ton about Boy Scouts, never been a Boy Scout, but uh, you want to earn merit badges, obviously. Got it. You know, you got to, mm -hmm. and yeah. having disc golf as a way to earn that opens up just because disc golf is so much more accessible yeah so like it is yeah. an easy way now i don't know what all you have to go through to you get it break 68 but before <laughs> you know before obviously you had to go all through all of that with golf yeah. which is a much more way expensive harder and sport, way more expensive yeah right and so like being able to do that with disc golf That's awesome who knows how many kids will be like oh i can try out a new fun sport for cheap and earn another merit badge sweet this could be big for the growth of the sport it's probably one of those things that like this is a big announcement it will have a huge impact long term that we will never hear about again. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You'll just randomly run into people a bit like It'll five, like, oh, yeah, ten yeah, years from I now. Like, this, I found it. Oh yeah, Boy I found it when I was a, I was yeah. a Boy Scout trying to earn my golf merit badge. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait, what? Like that's that's the type of stuff where like that's a big announcement, and we won't hear about this again. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's not still actively growing the sport over Love the it. next 10, 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Love, so, it. Love it. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Is who who knows how big of an announcement it actually is? I think it is. just it like hit cool. me like how impactful that is. Like the amount of like I know so many gym like gym teachers who are incorporating it into like their curriculum and stuff like that. Yeah, and then also stuff like that. Like all those kids. I, yeah, I don't, my so my brain can't even comprehend I, the impact that that's gonna have. Yeah. the way I got into disc golf in general or knew it existed was my brother's um, Mr. G was his name. I don't remember his actual name, Mr. Uh, G, but. Mr. G was his name, and he was into disc golf with the Liberty Disc Golf coach and uh, like another local teacher. And they played disc golf back when my brother was in middle school. Yeah, and so he loved disc golf, and he basically just wanted a way for him to play disc golf more. And so he just taught it to the middle school PE class, and they would like set up baskets in the field and they would play. So my brother got introduced to disc golf then, and then they did it, or it might have been high school because I, maybe I was in like elementary school or middle school. So I went out with my brother like twice during yeah. that and played it for the first time ever and it didn't stick and then mr g moved on from the school so there's a new pe teacher my brother didn't play anymore so my brother like didn't get super into it and then my senior year is when my brother was like getting into disc golf and then i was looking for something to do and that's when i first like got into disc golf but the whole reason my brother knew it existed was he was taught it in pe so that's, that's how I started awesome playing disc golf was indirectly through my brother playing disc golf in PE. Let's go. That's so awesome. But yeah, you, like that's what I'm saying is like you never know how big of an impact a lot of this stuff yeah. has. It just like slowly over time, you know, mm -hmm. these kids who learn disc golf at a junior clinic and they're one of 30 kids that are yeah. there. 
They're the next world champ. There you go. That's so sick. Boom. Go. All right. We've been waiting all off season to be able to do this. The winners and losers of the off season. What I've done is I've highlighted most of the key brands and then I've pulled out their key movements. Okay. So who they've signed, who they've lost, so on and so forth. And we'll just discuss, are they a winner this off season or a loser? Um, some of them are kind of like, meh, kind of just did what you need to do. So yeah. I guess they technically won, but we'll start with Innova. They're one of the companies that I'm like, man, just kind of do what you need to do. They gained Emerson Keith um, about signing? and they extended basically everyone else. Yeah. I was going through and I didn't see any like key losses. Um, they didn't have a lot of key players up. Some of them come up next year. Um, but basically they signed a ton of people to one year extensions and they picked up Emerson Keith. Innova so, is, we just don't, they're not like other companies because any if they were any other company and we saw that, well, they've got, you know, Sexton and Jerome on the payroll, but like Calvin's their big guy. We might've thought to ourselves like, oh, they could be in the market for like a big signing, but we just don't think that about Innova. No. Um, but they're doing, Innova is doing everything according to their plan. So I don't, well, the other key I guess thing, they're a winner. We were just talking about for the last a long time of Edge and all of that. Innova is directly tied to all of that. So Innova does do a lot with like yeah. in mo a lot of times when PE classes and stuff are going on, they got Innova discs in their hands, mm -hmm. you know, sure. and like stuff like that. You don't need pros. So far, Innova has been on the right side of history. We'll see if it continues. Yeah, that. but I think they win this offseason. Emerson Keith could be a good signing. He had a win last year. He's a solid player. Yeah. Keeping their team deep and Just keeping the fact players that they happy. They still have Calvin. Yeah. That does a lot for them. Now, Discraft, they signed Hannah Wynn and picked up Chris Clemens. Mm -hmm. They extended Aaron Gossage, Andrew Presnell, Ben Calloway, Holland Hanley, Paige Shu, Andrew Fish, Missy Gannon, and seemingly Paige Pierce because her contract yeah. was supposed to be up this year. She's still pushing and promoting Discraft, and we haven't heard anything about her leaving or about her re-signing. So yep. there might've been some type of extension that just was never announced. Yeah, no, there But winner. she is clearly still with Discraft. So uh, the only player I really saw they lost was Chandler Fry. They are a winner and Discraft is a company that is able to every year, they have these, they have a massive team and so many names and every year um, they are, cause did you say Holland Hanley? Cause I think she yep, got ex extended yeah. her. Uh, every year they're able to keep their players and a lot of them just get one year deals. Just, they just keep them along. Like they're just able to just, they must be good to play for Discraft. They yeah, enjoy they being happy. there. So that is why they're successful. And they, yeah, they didn't make a splash signing, but they have so many guys being able to extend Gossage. Chris Clemens is a great signing. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, I would say they're not massive winners, but like that's a, that's a great offseason. They did what they had to do this yeah. offseason. Yeah. Um, they won. For sure. For sure, Discraft's a winner. And, and yeah, I mean, losing Chandler Fry, realistically, when you're able to still extend everyone you extend and you picked up Chris Clemens, yeah. Chris Clemens for Chandler Fry it's in a, a different win. sport, like that's a huge it's a net that's win. a huge trade. Someone else got robbed. No offense to Chandler Fry. It's just Chris Clemens is a better player right now. Um MVP, I didn't see where they lost anyone. Well, they're yeah. And they signed Eagle whole McMahon. Be chalked up they also it. signed Rookie of the Year, Paul Kranz, and I think Rookie of the Year Silva Saarinen. So, but Eagle McMahon, I mean, they're the biggest winner. They're the Huge. biggest winner. Yes, they they yes. picked up Eagle McMahon. They're going to make, the, they made the most noise. They're the biggest winner. You reunited the Crush Boys. They've I been, mean, they've yeah. been winners for a while now. Yeah. yeah. Ever since they signed James Conrad, mm -hmm. they have really, you know, it's been since 2018, we've seen two companies do this. 2018, we saw Discraft pick up Paul McBeth. And before pre 2018, you had Innova, the giant, you had Prodigy. You know, they had some good pros. They kind of were like hanging around and then you kind of had everyone else, you know, like trilogy had, I think Ricky might've been around 20 in 2018. Ricky was with latitude. Um, but like he, that was just kind of the, the scope of the thing is everyone threw Innova and then some people threw trilogy, some people threw prodigy and then people had a buzz or a zone in their back. Mm -hmm. And that was that. Then Discraft picks up Paul and Paige over the, those few years and the next thing you know, Discraft is a giant and has like a massive team. That's the track MVP's on now. Is MVP was everyone picked on people who threw MVP. You know, meant you're a rec player. They pick up James Conrad. He wins a world title. It's like, oh, wow. You know, during that time period, a lot of people did try MVP. It started to like spread a little bit more. You heard less about, you know, just being a rec player brand. Picked up Simon last year, changed their brand completely now because now their brand is like, in the forefront of a lot of people's mind and now they've picked up eagle and then in addition they picked up a lot of like 
ancillary players to go along, but those are the, the three-headed monster. Yeah. And they're able to keep James around. Simon's obviously on a 10-year deal. Eagle's now on a five-year deal. MVP's on the fast track to become, if they're not already, the end of a discraft. MVP is the now the three-headed monster at the top of disc golf. Mm-hmm. Uh, MVP is obviously the biggest winner this offseason. I don't think Nick, that was really a question. Next one down is Prodigy. Didn't make much noise this offseason, but they lost Gannon Burr, they lost Alden Harris, they lost Parker Welk, and they lost Lyke Lawrenson. And really the only big extension I saw was Ezra Robinson. Yeah. Um, that's a loss. That's a loss offseason. Losing Gannon Burr, um, I think that the Gannon Burr situation is a real bummer because I think they probably could have kept him happy in um before at all the turmoil went down they could have kept him happy and he could have been a long-term prodigy guy um uh, and anytime you lose it's not like it's not like he's in the minor leagues upgrading to the major leagues right like they're they're a big company so it's not like it was inevitable that Gannon was someday going to leave yeah they could have kept him around for a long time and they weren't able to do that so anytime that happens to that is a loss like you that is a loser um that is just like it makes you a loser of the offseason if you lose your future and obviously, you still have Isaac um, and Ezra, and you've got some Kevin Jones. You got some players. You got you know. got plenty of players. There are, there's still, players, but like, but you lost your guy. Yeah, it's a bummer. Um, now, Discmania is an interesting one. They lost Eagle McMahon. They signed Gannon and Alden, and they were also able to promote Nicklaus up to that team yeah. to join Gannon and Kyle. What are we thinking here? I think that they are just looking at it, um, just saying like, okay, net talent wise. They they actually win because they I think they bring on with with uh, Alden and Gannon they make up for and then some talent wise, um, net marketing wise they lose, given their circumstances and the inevitability of uh, Eagle leaving because I just think it was going to happen. I think they actually are winners. Um, like I said, objectively, did they lose? Yes, but given their circumstance, I think they are winners because they did everything they had to do. And that they could do to recoup if they because if they don't make this Gannon signing, they're toast. Um, they bring in Gannon and Alden, and that is everything they could have done to make this as good as possible. Obviously, like I said, if you just look at it marketing wise, objectively, it is a loss. But given their circumstance and given that Eagle was on his way out, and I don't really think they were going to keep him this time, I think they win uh, in the sense of what they were able to do, and I think they have opportunity to to get right back on track. I really do. I think they're losers this offseason, um, mainly because you're right. They did the best they could, but doing the best you could doesn't mean you win every time. And this is a loss. Uh, losing Eagle McMahon, I mean, you would have had to sign Simon back to to tie that back together. Um, so, Gannon Burr, yeah, you, you gain talent. But at the end of the day, wins don't sell discs 90% of the time. Wins with marketing players sell discs or just marketable players sell yeah. discs. Not that Gannon's not marketable. It's just he's not going to go do the marketing think, on himself. Eagle McMahon, and the big thing is... I just Eagle think five McMahon, years from now, there's a, there's a bigger chance for this to be more even than, than it looks right now. The problem, though, is Eagle McMahon going and joining Simon is not necessarily like, can Gannon make up the hole that was created? It's like how many Discmania throwers over these next three, four, five years are about to become MVP throwers. That's True. the loss there because look at what, you know, did Innova, when they lost Paul, obviously a different scale, but look at everyone's bag that was an Innova thrower. Like yeah. a lot of people who are Discmania throwers, we became Discmania throwers because we loved Simon and Eagle and like watching what they did. Also, you mm-hmm. had Paul back in the day throwing Discmania. Like that's yeah. where a lot of Discmania players come from. That doesn't mean I'm taking all Discmania plastic out of my bag because, oh, you lost Simon and Eagle. No, but it does mean I'm curious, right? Mm-hmm. Like I've already put more gyro in since, e- since Simon. I'm sure more gyro is going to enter my bag since Eagle. And if I had a mainly Discmania bag, which I don't, but a lot of people do, there's only one option of what's coming out yeah. if Gyro's going in. I so the, to me, they're a loser of the offseason. The, they did the best they could to get as close to being a winner as possible, but you, they couldn't let Eagle walk. The biggest thing to consider, well, I just didn't think they had a chan- choice, but the biggest but thing to that's consider the only is way for who, them to be a created, who created Eagle McMahon's brand, Discmania. He was really young. He went in there. They created somebody that that all the young players really latched onto. Who created Simon Lazat's brand, Dismania. Where is Gannon Burr now, Dismania? So we've, so we've seen it over and over again that they've been able to take a young, talented player and turn them into a very fun player. The that, only problem with that theory, because it's a true statement that you just said, 
But what they were doing early Eagle Simon, Eric Oakley, Avery Jenkins days, we haven't seen them do recently. Like the type of content that Discmania was responsible for putting out back then, you know, the Avery and what was their uh, road tour called? Remember that? You had like mm. stamps. Yeah, like in the game, deep in the game or something mm -hmm. with Avery Jenkins. You had remember. like, there's so many vlogs where they were traveling together in the RV and like Discmania was responsible for so much of that. And they also were teaming up a lot with like Central Coast and Paul. That type of content is gone from the recent history, right? And so you have Alden Harris's vlogs is what's left. Which is huge. Which probably got gets more views than any of those videos did. But it, not in the scope of how big disc golf is now compared to how it was then. My thing the is, I don't... The percentages of disc I, golfers I think, that saw those videos compared to the percentage of disc golfers... I've never seen an Alden Harris vlog once. They get like 40,000 to 50,000 views a week a lot of the time. Yeah. The Simons are getting hundreds of thousands. Yeah. That's, well, that's the well, new we're bar. we're not talking about Simon. But I'm saying that's... The, but Eagles that's on not, Simon's That's vlog. not the bar. That, that's the literally the best... That is the best in all of disc golf. That's yeah. Not, and that's what, the, what I'm saying is those videos used to be at the best of all of disc golf. When it was Simon, Avery, Eagle, when they were doing that stuff. I've never stuff. even seen half of those videos. But the you've seen the, some of them. The deep you in the game the, videos I remember were with UC and Avery. They didn't even have Eagle in them. But you saw the starter set challenge with, we literally just well, talked about it. nothing to picked. do with Discmania. That was, they were in the Discmania RV. It was, on, it was on Central Coast. The first one. But I'm right, saying like that, that type Central of content Coast doesn't video. exist anymore. That's what built Eagle and Simon's brand. Yeah, no, that type I, no, of content's yeah, gone. But it, it, it can now. There's different content. Like Alden's vlogs are very they they. they yeah, but now it's not Discmania building their brand anymore. That's Alden, is what I'm saying. Right. So, but Discmania. So, and and I always said Prodigy didn't do this, and Discmania needs to. They need to tap into those, uh, into those pieces of content because I think that it's a really good platform. And and the only thing you ever saw Prodigy related on those videos was like at the very end of the video or the very beginning all and be like hey my new disc is on sale i think that disc mania would be very wise to uh try and tap into those um because all i'm saying is they have like those vlogs are very fun they have babcock too they've got babcock alden and gannon they got three guys who are fun they are in really fun pieces of content together i think they have a great opportunity because at the end of the day simon and eagle they captured our generation but like simon's in his 30s eagle is getting older like 10 years from now, it, the landscape is going to look different. Like eventually those guys will um, get older and they're and like the younger generation always does latch on to the younger players. That's just kind of how it works. Like they, they like the younger players yeah. and that, that does reset. So it is up to disc mania to create that platform and, and get that going. But like they have the recipe, I think disc mania, as long as they can hold it together, um, they have everything they need to get right back to where they were. I, you know, Simon and Eagle are Other awesome, but like they're not one of a kind. They gotta be pumping out more discs, I think. Come out with what? More discs, more molds. Well, I think yeah, I, I think, think that's just, just I think they come out there. as many of, as they can. Yeah, I think they're just limited right now. But yeah, no, the, I don't think they're the biggest losers this off season. Um, but I definitely I think they're losers. I just think they went into the off season knowing Eagle was gone, and so. For, from their off-season perspective, they're a winner. From the outside looking in, it is a net We're loss. We're on the outside looking in. Well, somewhat. But I'm just saying, in my mind, I'm thinking if I'm Disc Mania, I would consider the off-season. No, uh, I think they did win. as good as they could have. Yeah. I still think they're losers for the off-season. That's fair. Yeah. I, I would say they're winners. Uh, I didn't know if Connor had an answer. You look at your I mean, I, I think it's definitely big to get Gannon, not definitely big. It, I mean, like, it's that's what they had to do. To yeah, they Gannon. didn't have an yeah, option. That's, but yeah. they also lost Eagle, who is, uh, you know, pretty important. So. Yeah, Lone Star was next. Now, some of the Lone Star we don't have questions or answers for, like Chandler Kramer. They lost him. We don't know what happened mm -hmm. after that. Kramer, he hasn't really answered anything. Uh, Chandler Kramer's gone. Emerson Keith was lost, and Josh Hofstra I put on the list because they lost their marketing guy, who was responsible for quite a bit at that company, but. They signed Connor O'Reilly and Carter Aarons. So yeah. this is an interesting one. They were also they were able to extend a few other players. Um, but like if you go talent wise, I think they went fl blow for blow. Realistically. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The problem the biggest problem with Lone Star is they got dominated in public perception um, because everything that we know about their situation is they basically had an internal meltdown coming from leadership. Um, everybody really liked Josh Hofstra, like guys that left, like didn't have great things to say about it. So that's their biggest issue is though, like, yeah, it, from a net talent wise, like car Aaron's is a really great signing. Like that's yeah. very solid Young up and comer. Um, 
But the problem is, I think people were already kind of iffy about Lone Star, the whole Ranger team thing. Like, we kind of thought that was funny, like, whatever it is, what it is. But this did not help their case in the yeah, PR. Yeah, we, we still don't have true details because well, we've only really heard one side of the story, which is people leaving, which true. obviously people leaving are not <laughs> yeah. going to say nice things about where they're leaving. The abruptness mm-hmm. in which they um, left and the things that I have heard says that it was not a, it's not a great situation. At yeah. Star Discs. Uh, but they were also able to extend Robert Burridge in there. Sure. Um, and they still, you know, have Nico LaCastro. They still have, they still have a lot they of things. They do have players. So, I would say they're very close to kind of break even, but the, I would lean loss. Um, yeah, the PR thing, it, it, you just... That's why I put Josh Hofstra on there is because, like, that was the one of, like, you can lose players, you know what I'm saying? And when you lose players, it is... But Josh Hofstra had become, like, the face of the brand on a marketing side. It was almost like when Dynamic lost um, Bobby Cool Daddy Slick Breeze, mm-hmm. right? That exit still just kind of is and weird Danny to me. Lindahl. Well, they just lost Danny Lindahl, but the, the Danny Lindahl yeah. exit isn't as weird to me because... Bobby Brown, I think is his true name. Um, he was like the face of their marketing. And then he didn't leave the disc golf world, which is always an interesting yeah, one. Yeah, that me. is a good point. Like he just went and now he's working with Clash Discs and doing a lot of stuff with Clash. Now, I think a lot of it was he went, that is very loud. <laughs> a lot of it is he wanted to be close to <clears throat> family, I think. He wanted to kind of do his own thing and he has more freedom with Clash, it seems, and he's working from home. So there is a lot with that. Mm-hmm. But Josh Hofstra, I feel, is in a similar boat where... Josh Hofstra was very crucial to building Lone Star to where it is, right? And he was like a public figure with it, very similar to Cool Daddy Slick Breeze. Um, he had, you know, Disc Golf Answer Man with, um, what was um, the Robert original, McCall. Robert McCall and Eric McCabe. And like Robert McCall has gone from Dynamic 2. Like when you have these core guys leaving, Mm-hmm. that's when it starts to put red flags up. So I think if Chandler Kramer and Emerson Keith would have left and Connor O'Reilly and Carter Aarons would have came in, I probably would have said win just because Carter Aarons has a lot of upside. But when you add in Josh Hofstra and a lot of like the... the fa- There's been a lot going on on Facebook. Like yeah, a lot with of like the, the... owner getting in the mix and it's... Not a lot of the it. things that were said upon exiting... A lot of bridges Puts a burned. lot of PR question marks out there. So that's why I'm saying they're close to being broke even, but I'm a lean loss just because... It didn't help their PR this offseason. But if Carter Carter Aarons pops off next year and has a phenomenal year, they could be proven to be winners. Dynamic Disc lost Chris Clemens and Carter Aarons. I didn't see where they signed anyone. I was looking at the ulti world contract. They also got rid of Macy Valdez. They also, that's a big one, lost Macy Valdez. That was not on, uh, whatchamacallit, I would say, ulti world yet. Yeah, I would say loss because they didn't do anything. And, like, you're a company that... I would have liked to see a little, just a little bit of something. You look because Chris Clemens is like a pretty sizable loss. Like he's a big part of that brand. I would have liked to see like one well, signing the, to at least hang your hat on. And be like, oh, it's a nice little signing. Also, there. the details of Macy Vela Diaz's exit, where she's not able to do a full tour because she's pregnant. Yeah, it was a little hairy. And like she aired the details a little bit. It wasn't a PR nightmare. You know, they aren't getting drugged through the mud it wasn't by a good any means. Look though, but it wasn't a great look. So yeah. in not having any signings to kind of like counter that look or any big signings. Yeah. Uh, you got to go with the loss there. And losing Carter Aarons, like, that's a young talent. Yeah, it could it, be big. It's a loss. It's a loss. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Latitude 64 extended their core players, signed to new European talent. They're not the biggest winner of the offseason, but I don't think they're losers. They just kind of yeah. stayed where they are. I, they're just kind of boring to me. They and do anything. West Side, the only move I saw is they extended Matt Big Ayo. win. So that was a big win yeah, just big from win. the aspect of, like, that's, he's one he's of the most brand. fan favorite people. And, like, if you lose Matt Ayo, you're not yeah. really left with much. And then Michael yeah. Jordan against the world. He's yeah. still there. Michael Jordan. <laughs> Shout out Jordan. And then DGA, I uh, didn't see them lose anyone, and they picked up Tristan Tanner, Jake Mon, Parker Welk, Eli Ezra, Sullivan Tipton, Evan Scott, and Macy Villa. Kind of a sneaky, really good offseason for Great DGA. Great offseason for DGA. They just keep signing people and being like, wow, but then like not really winning tournaments a ton. Well, that was... Mostly Cat's fault, was, I guess. It was <laughs> I mean, she just didn't have the season that anyone expected her to have. Yeah. Or she it was a shocking season. Well, they brought in Marweed and then he stunk. Marweed did not have a great season he either. Stunk. Um but hey, I don't think any of these players are or are, are like this season is gonna be their season. Because they did have uh Cole Rodallin, one Ledgestone. They're their inv- oh, they do it for Dolan though. That but I they guess have, that is a big one for them. They have a uh a, a relatively a young core. Like they're yeah. none of their they're all their players I would describe as like breaking into the game more so um 
dude, that and so their DGA team's could crazy, be crazy. Actually, so the fact that they got they basically just like went on the list and were like, who are all the young like up talented players? I mean, Jake Monsolve and Tipton, like they got they all picked of them. them up. Yeah, so I respect the DGA. Man. DGA, you know that this is a good rebuilding move. It is. I don't even know if it's a rebuilding, but like building move. Like, I they're, they're getting blocks in place, and yeah, some of the blocks might not work out but some DGA, of them could take off dga right now the way they're moving their roster they remind me of that soccer team there's always like a soccer team that is notorious for buying chip players for like a million dollars and then selling them for 70 million two years later i feel like dga could be that company who gets these players and then those players go on to sign humongous deals unfortunately dga does not get I was gonna those say, that's the only problem in disc golf um, man is you don't get any they, there's uh, no benefit for they, signing unless they get talent. a buyout though yeah. they just need to get really long deals they need to get long deals release clauses sign everyone to 20 year deals with like seven figure buyouts that basket money must be good to them yeah must be good i mean to it them. makes sense you see a lot Courses of mocks, going in everywhere a lot of mock yeah. baskets out there um all right final thing this podcast i just wanted to highlight because this person's a was a huge huge part of disc golf in this area but um unfortunately over the weekend kenny palmer who is a local disc golf legend to be honest with you he was one of the founding members of the board here um if you enjoy any of our videos we play on his courses Mm -hmm. new london uh independence falling creek he's one of the original designers of i mean manita park every bedford county course if you've come here and enjoyed it and been like wow which we hear this all the time y'all's parks and rec department is awesome they do a phenomenal job that was all thanks to kenny palmer and he unfortunately lost his battle with cancer um over i think it was on friday Mm -hmm. um so huge loss for the area um you know it's been a a long battle with cancer so it wasn't a you know overnight shock but um still a very very sad thing the bedford county parks and rec um they still are very supportive of disc golf and everything and that was all thanks to to kenny and what he saw that disc golf in this area could be um, most of our channel in this stuff you enjoy is thanks to obviously Kenny and what he saw. Like I said, this area could be disc golf in this area because before we did not have many courses. We wouldn't have New and, London Independence. Yeah, like and the courses we did have, they were just like, they were mowed and yeah. they were upkept, but there wasn't a lot of events. Yeah. And um, I remember I called him in, I think it was 2018 or 2019 for us to run the battle for Bedford. And because I was told originally back in like 2019, Bedford County doesn't like disc golf. Um, don't even try to run a tournament. And I was like, I'm going to try. And so I called him and Kenny picked up the phone and was like, we haven't wanted to have a disc golf tournament out here for so long. Like we're all in, we love it. And they have been ever since that moment, they have been a dream to work with as a tournament mm-hmm. director, as a company, as content creators. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to yeah. mention that um, he was a part of getting worlds here and I wish he could have been here to see everyone enjoy the fruits of his labor. But yeah, that's yeah. the show for this week. Nice. Well, um, not quite. Oh, Silas Select. Yeah, you gotta name your disc before, before you go, and then you gotta go pick up Brody. <laughs> then I gotta go pick up Brody. Brody Smith yeah. just landed. The Dark Horse has landed. That's the next. That's the next the merch shirt. Landed. The, Dark the Dark Horse, Horse has landed. landed. It's gonna be under the Grip Lock Connection, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Mm-hmm. Connor, what do you think this disc is? I think that this disc is a. Trevor, what do you think this disc is? I'm going to say it is a DGA, what's the really flippy one? Sale. Sale. DGA sale. I was Mm. thinking Quake, but I'm not going to go the same brand as you. You should. We should double up. Let's just smother DGA. I don't even know we have Quakes in stock right now. Give me a judge. Oh, where'd that come from? I don't know. I think it's a Prodigy PA2. All right. PA2 judge and sale. It's an arc Archangel. Angel. Oh, wow, wow. That's, that was so totally close. up for grabs. Too. Yeah, dang, phenomenal. That's out of the used bin. Archangel. Yeah, that's a that's a good Salas one. Salas does it again. All right, well Spec- there you have it. We only have like three more weeks of Grip Locked on this channel, and then we're moving over to the Grip Lock Ooh. channel. So if you haven't checked out the Grip Lock channel, be sure do it to go check that out right now. There's clips going up, reactions to content, all type of stuff. Um, and like I said, in the start of the season, in just a few weeks, which is hard to believe, it's almost here. We'll be moving Grip Locked over to there. So if you want to still stay tuned to Grip Lock, you're, you find this important part of your week to get all your disc golf news, head to the Grip Lock channel. But other than that, we'll talk to you again next week. <laughs>